Okay, let's talk about the running backs at the top of our rankings. Uh, of course, now with Derrick Henry no longer in the playoffs, uh, at the top we have Alvin Kamara and then Cam Akers. Yes, my guy. And then Nick Chubb coming in at number three. Sean, who are you relatively high on this week at the running back position? Uh, I, I'm high on Devin Singletary, uh, mostly because of his price and the situation. He's 4,500 this week at home against Baltimore. Um, you know, Zach Moss is expected to miss the rest of the playoffs, so that that should boost Singletary's usage way up. What he does with that remains to be seen. But um, you know, Devin's he's priced basically um, as if this was still going to be a 50-50 timeshare. Um, one of the things going for Singletary is he's faced the second lowest um, percent in terms of eight men in the box at 4.5%. Um, you know, this Ravens defense is going to be doing everything possible to stop Josh Allen. So it could leave for um, pretty good running room for Singletary. You know, he's probably only going to get gonna get 12 to 15 carries, but he's also going to see expanded usage in the passing game. And I think that's where the value really comes into play here. Uh, he ran around on 68% of the routes last week. Uh, but, you know, that could be closer to, you know, 70 to 80%. It remains to be seen how they're going to really work in. Uh, is it TJ Yeldon and uh, Taiwan Jones? Like this could be Singletary's game where he's, you know, a true workhorse. But, you know, he could be very highly owned, so he could be a potential uh, pivot here. But uh, I love him early in the week. And the other guy you mentioned, Cam Akers. I, I don't know how you could pass him up right now at this price. He's 5,700. They, they should lean on him a ton in this matchup it's against Green Bay. Um, you know, Green Bay did bring in uh, Damon Snacks Harrison, so that might shore up the run defense a little bit, but I don't think it matters here. I think Akers could see another 20 plus carries. And, you know, he saw a spike in routes run last week going up to 62%. So again, this is another workhorse back on a four game slate. That's, that's pretty hard to pass up at his price. Yeah, uh, very much with you on Akers. In his final four games of the regular season, he had 340 yards rushing, 96 yards receiving on you know 23 and a half touches per game, and that was while playing with an injury in Week 17. You know, last week dominant against a good Seahawks run defense with 131 yards on the ground, a touchdown, 28 carries, and then added the 45 yards as a receiver. Uh, this Rams offense right now just flows entirely through him with the quarterback situation that they have. And the Packers are number six in most fantasy points allowed to running backs. So I think a, a great situation for him. I'm more pessimistic on Singletary. And, you know, maybe part of it is that I just need to adjust my projections more to account for um, to account for Moss being out. But I still think that Josh Allen ends up getting a pretty significant share of the carries. And then I think that they also rely a little bit more on the passing game than on the running game. So uh, maybe I'm a little bit lower on Singletary, but also that Ravens defense. I mean, they're, they're tough all over, but I mean, they shut down Derrick Henry last week and, you know, it's not to put too much weight on like one game, but you know, their, their defense, when they choose to stop the running game, they can be pretty good with it. And, you know, so that's not to say they're going to focus on shutting down the running game, but uh, I don't know. It's a little bit, I, I, just a little bit harder for me to think that they're going to let Devin Singletary run all over them when Derrick Henry couldn't. But um, I don't know. Rayvon, where are you on Singletary? And uh, give us your thoughts on some guys you are high on. Actually, I think Singletary is in a good spot. You know, this price is just so low that if he, you know, puts up normal starters numbers at, at 4,500, um, yeah, his be price. a sleep waker. You're right. Yeah. His price is great. And I mean, the, the thing about it is you kind of hit on it. You know, Baltimore was selling out to stop Derrick Henry. They had, you know, eight men in the box. You're going to play the opposite against Josh Allen. I think you're going to, you're going to have to, cause I mean, you have to have a guy on each sideline just to slow down Gabriel Davis at this point. And then um, you still have to worry about digs and, and all these guys. So, you know, it's a, a completely tougher matchup. I think um, he'll he'll do fine but I, I like Nick Chubb here I think Nick Chubb is is really interesting you know he, he ran 19 pass routes last week to Kareem Hunt's 10 so he kind of doubled him up in, in that facet and I think uh, against Kansas City who's been one of the weaker run defenses in the league you're going to try to play keep away and then if you're still having Chubb run uh, double the pass routes as uh, Hunt I think he's an interesting uh, guy because you know, he's probably not going to be very high owned considering you have acres at 57 and Singletary at 45. So i um, like Nick Chubb this week as well. Hmm. I'm wondering about the uh, Kareem Hunt revenge game spots. Uh, <laughs> True. You know. 
Uh, Rayvon, who is someone that you were relatively low on? Uh, I think Aaron Jones qualifies just because he's in this, that he's priced second highest. And, you know, I could see Green Bay, you know, not having as much offense as they usually do. And, and Jones has kind of been, he hasn't always been that, that like guaranteed lead back each and every week. We saw AJ Dillon come up with a big game. You still have Jamal Williams in there. So um, I, I'd rather pay up for Alvin Kamara or actually go with Nick Chubb in a better matchup. Um, than Aaron Jones. Yeah, um, I I definitely hear you there. Uh, I I agree. I prefer Chubb to Aaron Jones. Um, Sean, who are you low on? Uh, same reason as last week, but uh, I'm low on J.K. Dobbins again here. Uh, he's 6K. Um, you know, last week he he rushed nine times for 43 yards, but once again he salvaged with the touchdown. So. I mean, he, he wasn't worth his price last week, but especially, you know, this week, if he doesn't score, I don't think he's going to be worth 6K. He had one catch for minus six yards, which is pretty typical for him. I think his 2021 stock is through the roof. I mean, we talked about it. Um, you know, right now, I don't think they're trying to preserve Lamar Jackson. So he's just running it uh, more times than he would during the regular season. So, you know, that's going to take away from J.K. Dobbins. But starting next year, I mean, a lot of these – carries are going to go Dobbins way while they try to preserve Lamar Jackson's for the playoffs. So I think right now th this is just the time to fade Dobbins while I'm still super high on him for next season. Yeah. I mean, thinking of Dobbins for 2021, there's a scenario in which Mark Ingram is gone and Gus Edwards is a restricted free agent. So the possibility that, that he might leave, he, he might stay too, but you know, there's a scenario where it's JK Dobbins, you know, locked yeah. in as the lead back in the league's most run heavy offense that, which is also pretty darn good running the ball too. It's not that it's just volume. They're efficient running it. So mm -hmm. that could be pretty exciting. Uh, Sean, give us, the running back player prop. Uh, let's go Devlin Singletary. So his total rushing and receiving yards. Let's go. Uh, I got it at 80 and a half. And while you guys think about it, I, I agree, Freeman. Uh, you know, they did a good job shutting down Derrick Henry, but that was clearly their game plan. Yeah. I don't think their game plan is going to be anything shutting down <laughs> Singletary. So I think, yeah. I think that they'll kind of invite runs to Singletary, uh, what he does with those remains to be seen, but I, I don't think he's going to be a big part of their defensive game plan. I'll take the under, uh, but, you know, knowing that you and Raymond are both on him and he, at 4,500, he's, he's great value, yeah. but knowing that you guys are on him uh, makes me a little less comfortable with it. I have this projected at, you said around 80 and a half. I have it projected yeah. around 73 and a half. Got it. I will go. Under, I have it right, right around 80, um, but that's more of an average. So, um, I, you know, listen, I still think he's, he can be worth his price. It's going to come down to a touchdown probably, but um, he has been their main pass down back for much of the year anyway. So, you know, if he can catch a couple passes and or get in the end zone, I, I still think he pays off that price. But yeah, I think, I think right, right. Uh, 80 is a good line. Yeah. Uh, with Freeman, you know, I'm kind of with you there because he's probably not going to win a GPP. He's going to be so highly owned. So yeah, if, if you feel like fading him, I think this is the time to do it. Uh, if we're relying on a touchdown here, he's not the guy that you want to be relying on a touchdown for. Um, so yeah, he's an interesting fade, even though all of our projections and models will, will say he's a good play. He does have a low enough floor where if, if you want to fade him this, you know, he would be the guy to be aggressive in fading because, because of his ownership being so high this week. Uh, 